Here be dragons. I was going deep between two jump points, taking the long way home and trying to avoid unnecessary attention, when suddenly they came out of nowhere. A school of beamers, massive, hundreds, maybe thousands of individuals. The freelancer systems were oblivious to them, pretending that absolutely nothing had just happened. I had heard other pilots reporting the very same thing, but had always written it off to the ever-present mix of stress, exhaustion, and alcohol. Humans fail often. Systems don't. And yet here I was, sitting up with a jolt, cursing and spilling coffee all over the place. They were all around the ship, streaming along like alien sardines in one of the old school marine parks my grandparents used to take me to a lifetime ago back on Earth. Huge elders. Some of them more than 600 meters long and with diameters of up to 8 meters. Their ivory gilded segment bodies glowing faintly in the light of the system's distant sun. Between them flocks of fledglings, most of them not even the length of the ship, their transparent bodies mere shadows, barely registering against the background radiation. I had read somewhere that they were capable of doing at least 0.3c, but these guys were taking it slow, maybe because of the many young ones in their midst. It was a stunning dance, choreographed by an intelligence I couldn't even begin to understand. It also was, without a doubt, the most beautiful thing I had ever seen in my entire life. Sightings like this were rare, very rare as the beamers were slowly retreating from the ever-growing sphere of human influence. I was sure they had their reasons. I completely shut down the freelancer systems, and set us both, man and ship, adrift among these beautiful long-lived giants. I knew that they had a lifespan measured in millennia, and the thought that some of them were already crossing the Big Black when Eric the Red had set sail on his wooden nutshell to make Greenland his home, all on Earth, glass it, sent hot electric shivers up and down my spine. Their dance lasted a little over 80 minutes, a time I spent motionless on the edge of my seat, hands clasped around the empty coffee mug. It was only when the last of them, another 500 meter giant, vanished among the stars, that I awoke from my dreamlike state, suddenly painfully aware of my stiff neck and my own tiny existence. I didn't make recordings of any kind. The augmentations of my own visual cortex were still miraculously functional. Nor did I log the location of our encounter, even though I knew that certain research facilities within the UEE would pay good money for this kind of information more than a century after the first contact, or better non-contact as they kept ignoring us, our knowledge about the Beamers was still embarrassingly fragmented. But this was my moment, mine alone, and I felt, foolishly, like I had somehow bonded with these alien creatures, so different from this little ape man in his flying tin can, and yet the same. Another example of Mother Nature's endless variations on the glorious theme of life. Since then, they have become my visual mantra. The anchor I grope for in the middle of the endless night, when the void is laughing at me, when it is trying to crush my very soul. I close my eyes and see them again, swimming gracefully through the unknown determined to reach whatever it is that is waiting for them out there under the canopy of stars. I take a deep breath, I open my eyes, and I go on. <laughs>